This country cannot afford to be materially rich and spiritually poor. Let every nation know, whether it wishes us well or ill, that we shall pay any price, bear any burden, meet any hardship, support any friend, oppose any foe to assure survival and the success of liberty. Let us not seek the Republican answer or the Democratic answer, but the right answer. Let us not seek to fix the blame for the past. Let us accept our own responsibility for the future. One person can make a difference, and everyone should try. Ask not that the journey be easy, ask instead that it be worth it. My fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. Today, we need a nation of Minutemen, citizens who are not only prepared to take arms, but citizens who regard the preservation of freedom as the basic purpose of their daily life and who are willing to consciously work and sacrifice for that freedom. Things do not happen. Things are made to happen. A nation that is afraid to let its people judge the truth and falsehood in an open market is a nation that is afraid of its people. Those who make peaceful revolution impossible will make violent revolution inevitable. Effort and courage are not enough without purpose and direction. Change is the law of life. And those who look only to the past or present are certain to miss the future. The rights of every man are diminished when the rights of one man are threatened. If we are strong, our strength will speak for itself. If we are weak, words will be of no help. I will splinter the CIA into a thousand pieces and scatter it into the winds. The high office of the president has been used to ferment a plot to destroy the Americans' freedom and before I leave office, I must inform the citizens of this plight. Only an educated and informed people will be a free people. Forgive your enemies, but never forget their names. Don't pray for an easy life, pray to be a stronger man. A full-scale nuclear exchange, lasting less than 60 minutes, could wipe out more than 300 million Americans, Europeans, and Russians, as well as untold numbers elsewhere. And the survivors as Chairman Khrushchev warned the communist Chinese, the survivors would envy the dead. For they would inherit a world so devastated by explosions and poison and fire that today we cannot conceive of its horrors. Hold fast to the best of the past and move fast to the best of the future. A revolution is coming, a revolution which will be peaceful if we are wise enough, compassionate if we care enough, successful if we are fortunate enough, but a revolution which is coming whether we will it or not. We can affect its character, we cannot alter its inevitability. We must find time to stop and thank the people who make a difference in our lives. No responsibility of government is more fundamental than the responsibility of maintaining the highest standard of ethical behavior for those who conduct the public business. Communism has never come to power in a country that was not disrupted by war or corruption, or both. The state is the servant of the citizen, and not his master. Politics is a jungle torn between doing the right thing and staying in office. There are risks and costs to action, but they are far less than the long-range risks of comfortable inaction. Truth is a tyrant the only tyrant to whom we can give our allegiance. The service of truth is a matter of heroism. Too often we enjoyed the comfort of opinion without the discomfort of thought. 
There can be no progress if people have no faith in tomorrow. We are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy that relies primarily on covert means for expanding its sphere of influence, on infiltration instead of invasion, on subversion instead of elections, on intimidation instead of free choice, on guerrillas by night instead of armies by day. Those who dare to fail miserably can achieve greatly. For in a democracy, every citizen, regardless of his interest in politics, hold office, every one of us is in a position of responsibility, and, in the final analysis, the kind of government we get depends upon how we fulfill those responsibilities. We, the people, are the boss, and we will get the kind of political leadership, be it good or bad, that we demand and deserve. As we express our gratitude, we must never forget that the highest appreciation is not to utter words, but to live by them. If by a liberal, they mean someone who looks ahead and not behind, someone who welcomes new ideas without rigid reactions, someone who cares about the welfare of the people, their health, their housing, their schools, their jobs, their civil rights, and their civil liberties, someone who believes that we can break through the stalemate and suspicions that grip us in our policies abroad, if that is what they mean by a liberal, then I'm proud to say that I'm a liberal. In a time of turbulence and change, it is truer than ever that knowledge is power. The unity of freedom has never relied on uniformity of opinion. If a free society cannot help the many who are poor, it cannot save the few who are rich. Let us never negotiate out of fear, but let us never fear to negotiate. When written in Chinese, the word crisis is composed of two characters. One represents danger and the other represents opportunity. We are not here to curse the darkness, but to light the candle that can guide us through the darkness to a safe and sane future. There are three things in life which are real, God, human folly, and laughter. Since the first two are beyond our comprehension, we must do what we can with the third. Never let your fears hold you back from pursuing your hopes. Every time that we try to lift a problem from our own shoulders, and shift that problem to the hands of the government, to the same extent we are sacrificing the liberties of our people. No sane society chooses to commit national suicide. The cost of freedom is always high, but Americans have always paid it. And one path we shall never choose, and that is the path of surrender, or submission. A boy spends his time finding a girl to sleep with. A real man spends his time looking for the one worth waking up to. The great enemy of truth is very often not the lie deliberate, contrived, and dishonest but the myth persistent, persuasive and unrealistic. Too often we hold fast to the cliches of our forebears. We subject all facts to a prefabricated set of interpretations. We enjoy the comfort of opinion without the discomfort of thought. The rights of man come not from the generosity of the state but from the hand of God. By calling attention to a well-regulated militia, the security of the nation, and the right of each citizen to keep and bear arms, our founding fathers recognized the essentially civilian nature of our economy. The Second Amendment still remains an important declaration of our basic civilian-military relationships in which every citizen must be ready to participate in the defense of his country. For that reason I believe the Second Amendment will always be important. Conformity is the jailer of freedom and the enemy of growth. Let's talk to one another instead of about one another. 
for in a government of laws and not of men, no man, however prominent or powerful, and no mob however unruly or boisterous, is entitled to defy a court of law. If this country should ever reach the point where any man or group of men by force or threat of force could long defy the commands of our court and our constitution, then no law would stand free from doubt, no judge would be sure of his writ, and no citizen would be safe from his neighbors. There is little value in ensuring the survival of our nation if our traditions do not survive with it. And there is very grave danger that an announced need for increased security will be seized upon by those anxious to expand its meaning to the very limits of official censorship and concealment. Tolerance implies no lack of commitment to one's own beliefs. Rather it condemns the oppression or persecution of others. A nation reveals itself not only by the men it produces but also by the men it honors, the men it remembers. One hundred years of delay have passed since President Lincoln freed the slaves, yet their heirs, their grandsons, are not fully free. They are not yet freed from the bonds of injustice. They are not yet freed from social and economic oppression. And this nation, for all its hopes and all its boasts, will not be fully free until all its citizens are free. Our task is not to fix blame for the past, but to fix the course for the future. This is not a time to keep the facts from the people to keep them complacent. To sound the alarm is not to panic but to seek action from an aroused public. For, as the poet Dante once said, the hottest places in hell are reserved for those who, in a time of great moral crisis, maintain their neutrality. So let us begin anew, remembering on both sides that civility is not a sign of weakness, and sincerity is always subject to proof. Let us never negotiate out of fear but let us never fear to negotiate. Let both sides explore what problems unite us instead of belaboring those problems which divide us. Economic growth without social progress lets the great majority of the people remain in poverty, while a privileged few reap the benefits of rising abundance. A tax cut means higher family income and higher business profits and a balanced federal budget. Mankind must put an end to war before war puts an end to mankind. Which quote did you like the most? Share your opinion in the comments below. Subscribe and don't miss out the chance to see the next video.